when does Brahms come in? I'm Sophia and today we're going to talk about the Russian composer, pianist and conductor Sergei Vasilievich Rachmaninov. He inherited his love of music from his father and grandfather, who were very good pianists. The great composer was born in 1873. He began learning to play the piano at the age of four and his first teacher was his own mother. By the age of seven, Serozha, as he was called, was already playing works by Beethoven and Schubert with his grandfather. When he was nine years old, he was enrolled in the St. Petersburg Conservatory to study piano. He lived with his aunt and grandmother. They spoiled the boy very much, including giving him ten kopecks for daily expenses. Young Kokmaninov spent this money on a skating rink, which is why his marks on general education subjects were very poor. Things were better with music once due to natural abilities. At the St. Petersburg Conservatory he began to compose music. These were improvisations on the piano. While playing, he passed them off as works of great composers to avoid criticism. Sergei studied in St. Petersburg Conservatory for three years and then he was sent to Moscow, where he became a student at the Moscow Conservatory. Rachmaninoff studied in two departments, these were composition and piano classes. By the way, Sergei Vasilievich had a phenomenal memory. After three times of carefully looking at the music sheet, he memorized the whole piece. He graduated from the conservatory with a large gold medal. This was given only to those who graduated with excellent grades from two departments of the conservatory. At this time, he wrote his first piano concerto, and the graduation work was the composition of the opera Aleko. It was written in just 17 days, which is a very short period of time. At the conservatory, Rachmaninoff earned a special assessment from Tchaikovsky, who took the exam in harmony. He gave Sergei a 5, which is like an A, with four pluses. A serious shock for Sergei Rachmaninoff was the premiere of the first symphony, which was a failure. The premiere took place in March 1897, and the entire musical community was waiting for it. The symphony was performed by an orchestra conducted by Alexander Glazunov, a great composer and musical figure. But the work was understudied, and as a result, sounded in a very raw form. Everyone was talking about this failure. This led Rachmaninoff to severe depression. The composer lost faith in himself. Psychotherapist Nikolai Dahl helped him to get out of the state. His course of treatment was successful and the second piano concerto was written after therapy and was even dedicated to Nikolai Dahl. By the way, this psychotherapist also had famous clients like Stanislavski and Shalapin. Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto was written in 1900. The first part is based on a majestic and powerful theme. The chords, which open the concert, can be compared to the sound of an alarm bell. They build tension to the limit. The side part of the piece represents the image of love and happiness. The second part is the lyrical center of the piece. Here the murderism typical of Rachmaninoff appears. A feeling of tranquility of memories is created. The third part, which is the final, returns to the image of the first one in its greatness. The tension of the bells leads to a side part that sounds very bright. The light chords complete the second concert of Sergei Rachmaninoff. Rachmaninoff's compositional creativity was combined with his pianistic and conducting activities. In 1917, Rachmaninoff left Russia because of the October Revolution. Forever. He settled in America, where he had a huge number of performances. He purchased a villa in Switzerland, which was called Senar. The name was spawned of the first letters of his name, Sergei, and the name of his wife, Natalia. And R stood for Rachmaninoff. But in his works, there was always a longing to his homeland, musicologists say. The events of the Second World War became a great shock for Rachmaninoff. He sent income from his concert to the Red Army Fund to support the USSR. But the composer never saw the victory. Intense composing and performing were taking their role, and his health was weakening. This was also influenced by the fact that Rachmaninoff smoked a lot, which is why cancer was developed. In March 1943, just a couple of days short of his 17th birthday, 
Sergei Vasilievich died in California. Until his death, he played the piano. This was his life. Rachmaninoff wrote almost 400 compositions and played around 1,500 concerts. One day, a young pianist asked Sergei Vasilievich, Maestro, is it true that you have to be born a pianist? Rachmaninoff smiled and answered, The truth is, madam, without being born, it is impossible to play the piano. Brahms will come to see us again, but for now, see you soon. That was When Does Brahms Come in Podcast and Sincerely Yours, Sophia. Thank you.